Hey friends, Jacqueline here. Based on all the amazing things we are seeing happen online, we are predicting this is going to be one of the busiest seasons for e-commerce ever. Are you ready for it? No matter what stage of business you're in, the one thing we do know is you need to show up and create content that actually matters to your customers during this 2020 holiday season. But wait, you may be thinking, sounds great, but what do I actually say to them without being salesy? Don't worry, friends. We've got you covered this holiday season. Introducing 101 plus content ideas beyond the discount 2020 edition, a bundle of tools, prompts, and video training that helps you create content this holiday season to reach out to your customers beyond just offering discounts, which is uber important to having a profitable Q4. This is created specifically for you to use during this 2020 holiday season. So what's included? 101 plus content prompts to be used on social media, emails, and in live videos. Three months of edible calendars filled with daily content ideas for marketing in 2020 quarter four. Monthly checklists for 2020 holidays to inspire content and calendar prompts. Five holiday plug and play scripts that will help you show up easily on video to stand out from the big guys. And this is one of our favorites the easiest way to have a 12 days of holiday sales or a cyber month sales worksheet, plus video trainings and so much more. If you want to check it out, make sure to grab 101 content ideas beyond the holiday discount 2020 holiday edition. We wanted to make this holiday season as sweet as pumpkin pie that we are practically giving this away. Head to holidaycontentideas.com right now. And let's make this your most profitable holiday season ever. Welcome to the Product Boss Podcast, where we help product-based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey everyone, I want to introduce you to my co-host and biz bestie, Mina Kunlosita, an Amazon guru that has built a multi six-figure product-based business. In introducing the other half of the product boss, Jacqueline Snyder, she has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Product Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Jacqueline Snyder, with my perfect co-host, Mina kulo <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Hi, Jacqueline. <laughs> Hi, Mina. She never knows, friends. She never knows. I know. And I wasn't expecting perfect, but I will take it. <laughs> you take it because you inspire me on a daily basis. All right. So do you ever feel overwhelmed this time of year, right? Oh, it's yeah. The busiest time of year for product-based businesses. Service-based businesses get to kind of chill, say like, oh, we've sold stuff and now we're going to you know, take the holidays and enjoy them. Product-based businesses are like, what am I going to do? How am I going to make it? I have so many things to ship and sell and do. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, I think of it as like, you know how like there's the husband wife, right? And the husband can just like fall asleep before his head hits the pillow. You're so jealous because you it's like- my husband? It's weird. Right? Every husband I've ever heard of is this way. And I'm like, that is the most, I've never been so jealous of something like that. And I really wish that I had that ability. And that's how I feel about being a product-based person, looking at all the service-based people sipping on their, um, <laughs> sipping on their pumpkin spice lattes and peppermint mochas and thinking they can relax for the rest of the season. Whereas the rest of us have a bit of the overwhelm added on overwhelm added on overwhelm if we are not prepared for the busy time of year. Because this is what is expected to be the most profitable holiday season ever, especially online during 2020. And not only that, in normal days for product-based businesses, this is the time where people are buying. This is the buying season. And so it is the busiest season. So today we're going to share with you how to get things done and avoid overwhelm during your busiest time of year. And we are thrilled to bring this to you because there's still time to, you're still in it and working on getting your sales out there. And we want to really just help you avoid that overwhelm. 
Mm-hmm. Because right now is it's a kind of like that transitional time, right? Kids are going back to school. We're planning out how much money we want to make, knowing that we're going to be very busy. Also, a lot of us are making our own products or or getting them onto the manufacturer schedules. So there's lots of little details and changes in our our environment that are coming into play here, and so it's a lot. It's a lot for anybody, especially product people. All right. So these secrets that we're sharing with you, we're actually going to be giving away part of a course that we have. So if you have been with us a while, you know that one of the courses that we have is survival kit course bundle. It is a bundle of courses. It was built this year in 2020 to really help product-based businesses thrive, survive, and actually, um, really thrive actually what we've seen Mm -hmm. as a result of what we teach. We teach pivot and sell, which is one of the courses we have the done method. And we also have a video course inside plus some extra bonuses. Well, one of the courses inside is called the done method and it's the secrets to working from home. And we have received so many emails from our students saying that this done method has been life-changing. Somebody has lost weight doing it. Other people have been able to really get things done and schedule and really take a lot of action in their business. And we feel like this is so, this is the thing that you need. And so we actually want to share the D. DONE is an acronym. It's D-O-N-E. And we want to share the secrets that are within the first training of this uh, mini course, which is the D, to help you get things done. Right. And the reason why, as Jacqueline said, we created the Survival Kit Course Bundle as a way for product-based business owners to react and take action and move forward, but they also needed something that would facilitate that, which is why the done method came into kind of fruition, right? It was born because of necessity of there's so many things going on, especially post-COVID, and how are they going to inject cash into their businesses while getting these other things done? And so the done method was just a clear addition that we needed inside of the survival kit course bundle. So we're going to share the D and D Jacqueline stands for design your workspace and schedule. And so this is going to determine where and when you're going to work to set up the routine you look forward to in order to get things done. So before we jump into those secrets, I do want to say, and a lot of you that have been with us for a while have heard us say that we believe done is better than perfect. So as we go through teaching this first, you know, module of this course to you in this podcast episode, we want you to just take this mantra into your head. Done is better than perfect because the truth is that you will get far less done. If you are focused on getting everything done perfectly rather than simply moving forward and clarity comes from doing, taking action and seeing what works well and what doesn't work well. And you have to move forward imperfectly. So as we jump into the secrets to the D, we want you to just keep remembering that done is better than perfect. So D stands for design your workspace and schedule. Right. And we have designed your workspace, your workspace being in quote unquote, right? The air quotes, because when you're thinking about your quote unquote workspace, it's really about three things, your physical space, your mental space, and your calendar space. So I'm going to say that again, your physical space, your mental space, and your calendar space. So for product-based business owners, physical space is something relatively easy. It's your workstation, right? It could be your shipping station plus where your computer is. Your mental space, and we'll get that to that in to a minute, but it really ties into your calendar space, which is you setting up your calendar. But your mental space is deciding what type of person you want to be in your daily workspace. What type of person do you want to be in this workstation? This should reflect who you want to be and also reinforce your goals and desires. And the reason why that is, is because otherwise you will get burnt out. Otherwise you will feel like, why am I doing this? And why do I keep pushing myself to be like a hamster on a wheel? An example of a mental space, of taking control of mental space, because you're trying to take control of physical, mental, and calendar, is saying, I want to be a person that, for example, walks every day, takes a walk every day. I want to be a person that journals every day in the morning. So you're finishing that sentence, right? I want to be a person that dot, dot, dot. And that is really that mental space of that, because it's really about tying those three things together. 
And even during your busiest season, right, when you feel like there is no time left to squeeze for yourself, it is really important that you do find that and you take a small step towards it. So if it's, I want to journal in the morning, maybe it's just like, I want to journal for two minutes or I want to walk every day. Maybe it's 15 minutes, set some sort of easy to attain goal so that you don't feel like you're failing in one section of it. If you're not able to hit it, but, and then you're going so hard at the business side of it all, because this is going to be an overwhelming season or the way that we feel is overwhelmed. We're trying to minimize that overwhelm for you because kids are home or Mm -hmm. spouses are home and they're not working, or you're not able to see family or orders are bonkers through the roof. And it's more than you were even set up to handle, or your team is not intact the way it typically is. You know, we're all in different situations in different places in the world. So we want to just make sure that you're able to get clear on this and that you get your physical space, your mental space and your calendar space. And you start to really clean that up so that as you enter into even busier days, you don't feel overwhelmed, but you actually feel, you find clarity in that. Yeah. And you feel inspired because it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be a person that journals every morning, right? Because that can get overwhelming too. So you want to decide what type of person do I want to be? For me, it's lately, it's been, I want to be the type of person that enjoys my coffee over my pick of a song in the morning. So I've been listening to one song every morning. And I got that from my kids who have a a start of the school day song, right? So what is that mental space that you are really valuing during that time to make yourself feel like, okay, the overwhelm can come down during this time. Right. So it can be any number of things. Okay. So let's move on to the next secret. So the next secret we want to share with you is that you determine your schedule for your workday. So This is going to help you clear things up for yourself, decide when's personal, when's family, when's business. So what is the, your start time and end time for each day that you're working? Is it Monday through Sunday? Is it Monday through Friday? Is it a couple days a week? You make that decision. Decide when is your lunch break because you do have to nourish yourself. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mina and I, one of the things that we've found, um, because we'll actually, we don't have a lot of space sometimes between our really busy days, let's say masterminding and stuff. So if you're in our masterminds, you now know our secret, but for me, I'll have a smoothie in a cup that you can't see through with a straw. So I'm actually drinking my lunch if I don't have it, but I did have some sort of break in there to go, let's say make my lunch, but I, I know that I'm going to have time to eat. And then also now with our kids being home, a a few of us felt like to feed them. (laughs) Yeah, you have to feed them and all the things. So your schedule might look different, right? It might still be getting up earlier to do work or staying up later. Um, Just because your kids are home now and let's say they're doing virtual school doesn't mean that your schedule is just the way it is. You still need to take control of that calendar space. Right. And decide. And and that's something that Mina and I had to decide. We actually ended up having to shift dates when the school year came back. As you know, both of us have two businesses and we had to kind of shift the days that we were available outward to clients or to take meetings with our team. And, and, you know, there's other people that we work with for the podcast, or if it was for other businesses of when, you know, when is Mina shipping and running to the post post office? When am mm-hmm. I meeting with clients? Um, and so we really had to determine our schedules and our work days. And we actually put those in to our calendars, right? So we've blocked off that time and we know the times and dates that were available to each other and when we're available to our other businesses. Right. Which brings us to our next secret. And again, we're still talking about that workspace, right? The physical space, the mental space, and the calendar space. So secret number three is when you're first thinking about your workspace and you don't know where to start on those three things, you start with where you're struggling. So are you struggling with physical space? For example, that's your number one thing. Then maybe you make a new workstation or you reevaluate moving things around so your physical workspace is set up the way you want it to be. For mental space, for example, you start doing solutions that would instill habits into your space. For example, if um, you want to be the type of person that drinks a cup of water every morning um, before you have your coffee, well, you put the water cup where your coffee cup is. You know, if you want to take a walk every morning, you put your socks inside your tennis shoes. If you want to have an allotted time to do, I don't know, listening to a song, you set a timer for what time you're going to end that, you know, calendar space, for example. And then you also rethink or rearrange the areas to maybe incorporate your kids because there's other players in this workspace of 
that your, your new workspace, it could be your spouse, it could be your kids. The workspace is not what it used to be, right? You can work wherever you need to be. Right. I love the habits, the habits, the habit forming where you tack a habit on that's from, there's a whole book. Atomic on, habits. Atomic, <laughs> something with the word habits, uh-huh. but where you tack a habit, a new habit onto another habit and you try and do it for 21 days. So the idea of, you know, water cup and your coffee cup, it just makes it easier. It overcomes those obstacles for yourself. Uh-huh. Um, and for your workspace, you know, again, if it's your busy season, it might be that you have to take over the dining room table when normally you're just in one other room. It might mean that things are messier than they're supposed to be typically, but right now it's your busy season. I also want to give you the the grace and say that it looks messier right now, but it's because it's your busy season. When things are busy, other things kind of go by the wayside, but make it, think about your physical space so that you do feel a little bit more organized or you, you know, maybe it's chaos in your dining room table, but there's some sort of system you've created in there. Right. Mm -hmm. And maybe you get screens or something that covers up the room when you're outside of the room so that you can actually close it up and and leave it somewhere. So just really thinking about this because all of this really helps with that mental space as well. And yeah, we can go on to the next secret. Right. Right. And really thinking about those three, right. Cause you're trying to, the whole idea, the D is taking control of that workspace, create the mental space, the physical space and the calendar space, which moves us into the next one. And I think that this is really important because this is one of the biggest things I learned from having worked by myself for over a decade was that there is this mode that I have to go into and I call it my get to work mode. And that is basically the essentials that I need to get to work. Now, it's not a fancy outfit. It's not lipstick. It's not getting my hair done. It's not all these things that people usually get stopped up. What do you need in order to get things done? And that's your get to work mode. So for me, I will list them. It is the my laptop, it's my mouse and mouse pad. Yes, I'm old school. I need to have a mouse, a physical mouse <laughs> clicking attached to my laptop. It's a cup of coffee. It's my cell phone. It's my headphones. It's a notepad, a pen, and the internet. That's all I need. That's what I embrace as my get to work mode and not this ideal setting of I would love it to be a sunny day and um, you know a breeze flowing through my hair or whatever else. There's things that I just need to put on my headphones, have the internet, have a cup of coffee and get to work. Mm-hmm. And I crank Absolutely. it out. You do actually. Mina will, Mina will have some days where she's just like not working and then the next day I'll be like, oh, I've redone everything. <laughs> Right. So it's like the the flow of the thing because a lot of times, and we can go into this other secret, a lot of times that's where we get stuck is we get stuck on our workspace design. And this happens to the best of us every few weeks. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because even I have to like rearrange my furniture or whatever because I'm stuck on how something looks rather than how something functions. When it really... I don't need all those things, right? Mm -hmm. So the next one is don't get stuck on your workspace design. That's the next secret. So another common mistake is that you get stuck on that workspace, like Mina said, including your calendar. So you need to, so yes, there's that look. And the thing is, is what do you need? Some people are okay with working with clutter. Some people need their desk to be clear. I'm going to be spending some time in California at my in-laws and on the road. Um, We're kind of, we're doing a cross country trip and leaving for a little bit. And I'm going to be working out of a room. And my husband's really concerned about like, where are you going to work from? And I was like, if I have my laptop and my microphone and the internet and a decent light on my face and a background that doesn't look, you know, bad if I'm on a Zoom call or something like that, that's all I need to do my business because it's, it's the simplicity of it, right? I'm able to do that. Now, I know a lot of you are product-based businesses and you are making stuff and filling stuff and packing stuff and it's not as simple as that. But you think, what do I need to get my everyday done? So mm-hmm. we want you to focus on function more than the aesthetic of your spaces, even in your calendar. So don't get wrapped up on attaining that perfect look because it can it can stop you from moving forward. I mean, don't you feel like sometimes our calendar needs to be beautiful? <laughs> I'm not so into the beautiful calendar. It yeah. just needs to be in the calendar for me. So this is the over planner, 
right? This is the person that looks at a planner and says, I'm going to get some stickers, some (laughs) color coded markers, some, maybe some like little dot thingies or um, some perfect tabs. And I'm going to get my calendar space looking beautiful because my planner is all done. Well, you've just sucked yourself into a planner overdue, you know, when really it doesn't need all that. You just literally are thinking about function. Like what Jacqueline said, Sometimes it's your dining room table. It can be very ugly, but you know what? It's this time of year where it's fine. Um, this is the, you know, the reason why the secret is so important is because a lot of times we'll be looking at a washer and dryer. We'll be thinking, I should really do a load of laundry. Well, no, you shouldn't be doing a little load of laundry because who cares if you're working on top of the washer? You don't even need to be doing laundry right now. That's just your workspace of getting the function out of you working on your business. Right. It's funny because, yeah, my, for me, and I guess it's done is better than perfect, but for me, did I say it wrong? I always say it wrong. No, no, that was right. Done is better than perfect. You start with the done. (laughs) Sometimes Jacqueline says better done than perfect, but we usually say done is better than perfect. (laughs) You have like a whole sticker and an Instagram post that I can't remember it sometimes. But yeah, for the calendar part, you know, for example, for me is, and I, we've heard me say this before, I live and die by my calendar. I'm, we're trying to plan, you know, with my husband, he's got some work stuff coming up and I'm like, it's in my calendar. And I've even gone in and I've blocked it off. It's, it's a little bit messy, but I've said like, I'm with the kids in these hours. So my husband knows that he can do his work because there's a lot of stuff happening. So I forgot because Mina comes from the scrapbooking background in a way. And then also that there are a lot of planner people here that do beautiful planners. Just get it in your calendar. Just block your time. It does not need to be pretty. It just needs to be that you can quickly look at something and say, yeah, today's a work day or today's a shipping day or today I have to make X amount of things. So some other tips for you are keep your physical work area clean and organized. So dining room table, dedicated office on the washer and dryer, keep it clean and organized because that's the thing, right? If it's not clean and organized, you're going to want to clean it first. We just want you to get to work. Yeah. For Remember sure. you only need your essentials to get to work. So what do you need to get the tasks that you've decided to do done? Like even if you clear out your coffee cups, do you ever have like a big batch of coffee cups on your desk? <laughs> Oh yeah. And then my side table too, by my bed. My husband's so annoyed at me. It's like, can you please take your waters? (laughs) Right. (laughs) My husband's like, I don't know why you can't use one cup every day and rinse it. Like just one cup, like only have, I'm like, because I don't know what my one cup is. Right. So So currently on my desk, I have a coffee cup, the cup that I drink smoothies out of a giant cup for water and a can of Kirkland sparkling water. And somehow my daughter's left her cup (laughs) on my desk. (laughs) So yeah. But guess what? I'm recording a podcast and I'm totally fine because I have what I need, which is my microphone, my computer, and my earbuds. Yeah. And then you add to that experience of your workspace and calendar with easy things. So soundtrack or song, like Mina said, her daughters start with a song every morning. I used to wake my kids up with a song, like a, you could be a device as my son calls her, or we call her Amanda through, you know, that little device. There's a like start my day. And so we used to start with a song and it would kind of trigger them waking up in the morning. Um, you can also add in your most missed experience from working outside of the house. So for example, me and I both love to go drive through, get coffee and, you know, go to work, let's say, well, if you can't do that, can you go get Starbucks and bring it back to your desk? Can you make, like, I like to make a certain coffee that's like, oh, today's going to be a work day. I make my mint mojito coffee and I make that I know when I sit down. And then we also have multiple candles on our desk. So depending on the kind of day we're going to have, we light a candle and it just changes the experience. And it just is like, okay, you kind of triggered your brain to think, all right, this is my mode. This is where I'm going today. Mm -hmm. So I want to review that a little bit because we talked a lot about physical space, but what Jacqueline was just talking about, the experience, adding that simple experience to your your physical space, even if it's a dining room table or this clutter-filled area, she was talking about experience because that is the mental space that we're talking about, right? In order for you not to feel burnt out or feel like you have too much on your plate and you just want to quit sometimes, you need to really protect your mental space. And a lot of times it's very simple things, right? It's adding, lighting a candle, triggering that different ambiance of your environment, um, listening to a song that you're used to, um, drinking. I actually went to Starbucks yesterday and I, I had a 
very productive work day yesterday because I miss that. I actually miss going to Starbucks, having a really strong cup of coffee and cranking some workout, you know? And so I did that yesterday and then I was in the flow. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to redo all these million things. And I did it and I felt very tired afterwards, but I felt like I got so much done. And the whole time I'm telling myself done is better than perfect. And I just cranked it out. Mm -hmm. So then this brings us, so we've talked about mental, we've talked about physical, and then let's just talk about calendar. So the final secret we want to share with you is that you need to set up time blocks in your physical or your digital calendar. So remember we said it doesn't need to be beautiful. The, The next thing though, is that you do need to set up these time blocks. So I talked about a little bit earlier, but thinking about theming specific days based on the activities you need to do. For example, Mina's husband works out of the house and there's some days she's alone with the kids homeschooling them at home at synchronous learning. So she can't do certain things with work when she has to be full-time with the kids and her husband's not home, right? So when you time block that, is, is Mina taking the whole day off of work? No, but maybe she's doing something that she can do while supporting her children while working and kind of being the only parent at home. Um, also, do you have to ship every day? Some of you might think, actually, I don't have to ship every day. Maybe I ship three days a week. You know, maybe it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I ship and you block that into your calendar. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're doing other things. So really start to think about theming your actual specific days. And then you want to talk about working in batching because you're very good at batching. Yeah. Batching is so important because it helps you not have to shift your brain power, right? You're usually trying to do something and you're like, oh, I can do this all day long because I don't have to think about anything else. I'm in that mode, which is why it's very hard to synchronous. Synchronous? <laughs> yeah. Where you teach your kids through synchronized learning and still be working at the same time. So one of the things that I do do during that time is I listen to our podcast episodes um, just for quality check and I just randomly will do that. But as far as like trying to do deep work, it's impossible. You know, so when I'm talking about working in batches, it's really about being able to do one thing and doing a lot of that one thing, right? Peel a bag of potatoes type of thing is, you know, like you're doing that one task over and over and over and over because you're already in that mode. And that's really where the bulk of being productive happens. And I know it seems silly in just that little thing, but when you productivity honestly begets productivity. So if you are feeling productive, you're feeling inspired, you have control of your mental space and you have control of your calendar and you're moving through it and you're not focused on being perfect, it just begets more productivity, right? And it's not the idea of getting a whole bunch of stuff done. It's the idea of feeling good about what you've gotten done. And that's what we're trying to go for here. Absolutely. So this is the D to the done method, which is some, which is a course within the survival kit course bundle. And just to kind of go back over that with you, we remember, I want you to remember this done is better than perfect. Okay. So as you're going through things and we taught this in rock your holiday promotions challenge, when, when everyone was building out their promotions and designing their promotions for the holiday season, we're like, just get them done. Don't get hung up on which graphics do I use and how do I do this? You know, mm-hmm. same with your workspace, with your, with your mental space, with your calendar space. We want you, and even if you're thinking about time blocking and time batching, listen, just block a day. Just say this day between, you know, if, if anything, you start 12 to four, I'm working on my business. If that's as panned out as you need to be, don't be like, okay, from 12 to 1235, I'm going to send emails. And from 1235 to 105, I'm going to, I don't know, print out labels. I know people who do that and that's fine. And if that's how your brain works, do it. We're behind you. And if your brain doesn't work like that, just block it. Those hours are built for your for what you need to do or your business that day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's really hard during this time to be so rigid on your schedule and so rigid on the, the outcome because the, this whole idea is not, you know, we're not saying you need to get however X many things done. It's the whole idea of being able to move forward and feeling good about it, right? Because when you're really rigid about, I needed to do this during this time, what if something, what if there's a storm that takes out your internet? What if, you know, the postman doesn't come that day, right? 
it's just really hard to have that room and for you not to feel super overwhelmed when things like that happen. But when you're work, thinking about all three of those things, that's why it's like, okay, I have my physical space ideal, you know, but I know that I only need my essentials. I have my calendar space figured out, but I know ideally there's these batches, but I'm able to kind of move through them however I need to. And then also my mental space. Ideally, I would love to do this, but you know what? Done is better than perfect. And at least I'm getting to this point where I feel good about it still. And I feel inspired and I feel not burnt out. I don't feel overwhelmed, but I feel like, you know what? I'm I still got a good amount of stuff that I enjoyed during that time too. Right. Because we do. We want to make your life and growing your business more enjoyable. We want to make this season enjoyable because what you're doing this season is everything you wanted when you started this business, right? You're making, you're, you're selling, you're shipping. It's all the things that prove that your business is a great business. And then we also want you to continue though to move the needle forward right? And we want to keep you motivated and productive just little by little. And so this very first section of the done method is how you design your workspace and your schedule. And remember, your workspace is thinking about your physical space, your mental space, and your calendar space. I hope this was helpful. If you want to learn more, if you want to dig into the done method and the O, the N, the E, and all the other trainings, there's worksheets in here. There's ways to break down your 90 days and how you're going to, you know, create projects and work towards them. If you want to figure out how you can get something done and move on to the next thing. If you want to figure out how you can wrap up your day and come up with like end of day routines, we have all of that in the done method. So we'll put a link to it in survivalkitbundle.com. We'll put a link below in the show notes. And if you want to check out more, it's there for you. And if not, we hope that this helps you overcome the overwhelm that might be popping its little head up to you during your busy season and that you could really get things done. Yeah. Thanks everybody. One last thing before we go, we created this podcast as a reminder that you are not alone in this. Growing a product-based business is hard and we want to help you through it. So thank you so much for listening because we truly appreciate it. And we want to give special shout outs to those of you that have left us these amazing positive reviews. Thank you. Thank you. We read every single one of them, including this one from Caribbean Girls 1234. So it's titled Such a Great Podcast. Jacqueline and Mina are such great hosts with a wealth of knowledge to share. I really enjoy hearing their thoughts and the episodes are enjoyable while also giving lots of valuable insights and takeaways. Highly recommended. Wow. Thank you for highly recommending us. This means so much. And thank you for taking the time to leave this review. Yeah. And all the way from the Caribbean, maybe Caribbean girl. (laughs) So we love reading these and these really help us reach more people and help more small businesses, which is our mission, especially in a time of 2020. So thank you to all of you. Hey friends, Jacqueline here. Based on all the amazing things we are seeing happen online, we are predicting this is going to be one of the busiest seasons for e-commerce ever. Are you ready for it? No matter what stage of business you're in, the one thing we do know is you need to show up and create content that actually matters to your customers during this 2020 holiday season. But wait, you may be thinking, sounds great, but what do I actually say to them without being salesy? Don't worry, friends, we've got you covered this holiday season. Introducing 101 plus content ideas beyond the discount 2020 edition, a bundle of tools, prompts, and video training that helps you create content this holiday season to reach out to your customers beyond just offering discounts, which is uber important to having a profitable Q4. This is created specifically for you to use during this 2020 holiday season. So what's included? 101 plus content prompts to be used on social media, emails, and in live videos. Three months of edible calendars filled with daily content ideas for marketing in 2020 quarter four. Monthly checklists for 2020 holidays to inspire content and calendar prompts five holiday plug and play scripts that will help you show up easily on video to stand out from the big guys. And this is one of our favorites, the easiest way to have a 12 days of holiday sales or a cyber month sales worksheet plus video trainings and so much more. If you want to check it out, make sure to grab 101 content ideas beyond the holiday discount 2020 holiday 
edition. We wanted to make this holiday season as sweet as pumpkin pie that we are practically giving this away. Head to holidaycontentideas.com right now. And let's make this your most profitable holiday season ever.